Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Brittany Dufilly. I'm the Educational and Outreach Coordinator here at Vertex. Today, we're going to have Steve going over some user management and admin focused. So with that, Steve, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you. Thank you, Brittany. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Um, as Brittany said, we're going to go over uh, uh, MyTel Director admin training with a focus on user management today. Um, so. Before we get into that though, I did want to mention, um, just because there's a lot of people that have got eyes on, on a current issue that has uh, popped up on us with some Windows updates um, that were interfering with uh, some of the Mitel Connect services on our servers. And so for a while we had to you know, not run uh, some particular updates. Um, this was kind of the, uh, the initial alert on that. And then there were some subsequent roll-up updates which were also contained kind of the same fix um, from Microsoft, so we had to kind of avoid those for uh, for a few months there. Um, just wanted to update everyone that uh, Mitel has released both a patch uh, that can be applied uh, to your system, and they've also released a new uh, upgrade version um, that has that fix contained in it. So we've got a couple different avenues to get your system updated uh, to be able to handle the, uh, the Windows updates uh, and not have that problem anymore. Um, just kind of depends on what version you're on now and whether or not it makes more sense to just apply the patch or to do a, a version update to the next version. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you know, reach out to us here, help at vertex.com, or you can email me or call me directly, and we can take a look at your system and, and talk about what the um, what the best path forward is for you to get uh, to get this fix on on your system. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Director, so we can start off with today's training topic. All right, so here I've logged into my Mitel Connect Director. Um, when you first logged into Director, of course, it brings you to this dashboard screen, gives you a quick little uh, shot of what's going on with the system, kind of call volume, um, call quality. Um, the one thing on this screen I use is our uh, trunk group usage. Um, I like to make sure that our trunk group usage isn't peeking up into the yellow or even the red um, area, just to make sure we have enough trunks or phone lines available. Um, depending on whether you're using PRI, SIP, maybe analog lines, um, it's good to keep an eye and make sure that you've got, you know, enough of those. And also, again, maybe not, you know, too many of those that you're looking for. Um, so that's the one thing on this screen I kind of find the most valuable. Um, before I get into doing any sort of admin tasks on a system, I do like to take a quick look around and just make sure the overall system health is good. Um, I feel like that kind of protects me in case I go in and I make a change and something's not working. Um, well, maybe it wasn't working before I started. So, oh, let me log in here again. I got timed out. All right, so um, as I said, I like to do a quick overview on the system health. Um, the first place I like to look at is the connectivity grid. Um, ours is fairly small because we've only got uh, like six different components to our uh, Mitel system here. Um, but the connectivity grid, what it shows me is that each of the devices can talk to each of the other devices. Um, so I can see that, you know, my V-trunk switch, which is number three on this line, can talk to uh, number one, which is our director server, um, can talk to the V-phone switch, our ECC server, our edge gateway, and our T1K. Um, so making sure everything in there looks good. Usually if you see something red, uh, there's, there's kind of two different things that could be the issue. You might have a device offline. So one of your Mitel uh, switches, voice switches, or servers might be off, unplugged, whatever, drop, lost its network connection. So um, obviously that takes some, some intervention to figure out what's going on there and bring that thing back online. Um, the other thing is if you have a multi-site system, um, you might have a link to one of your remote sites or maybe a, you know, a routing configuration that's not allowing two devices to talk to each other. And so this can be really useful in multi-site environments to take a look at the, the routing and make sure that everything can kind of see everything. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing I like to look at is under status and maintenance. Um, I usually come right down to the appliances section and just make sure that all of our appliances look like they're in good health. Um, so I can see most of these are green. So at a glance, I know those are good. Um, I see the V-phone switch here. Um, it is yellow. And what it's showing me is that there are soft phones out of service. So that's totally normal. That is, that is going to happen on your system from time to time. Um, if you have any users making use of soft phone, which is um, you know, using their their connect client on their desktop as their as their telephone device, 
and maybe they've started up soft phone and then they've disconnected from the network or they started up the soft phone and shut down their computer. Um, so those soft phone connections kind of come in and service and out of service. So we'll get a yellow warning on that. Um, sometimes you might see um, not soft phones out of service, but uh, phones out of service. Um, again, that's, that's usually pretty normal on a system because somewhere in some office, somebody might have a phone unplugged um, and that's gonna throw this into this yellow alert um, and tell you that phones are out of service. <clears throat> Um, or sometimes it'll say port out of service, which honestly means the same thing as phone out of service. It just kind of depends on what version you're on. Sometimes it says phone, sometimes it says port. Um, but as long as it's it's yellow, that's that's usually okay. Um, having a couple phones out of service is kind of normal. Um, you can go down a little bit further under IP phones, and you can take a look at what phones might be uh, in service or out of service. Um, you can sort this. Um, by the color, just to kind of zoom in on the ones that are, you know, maybe having a problem. Um, we've got some phones that have been plugged in and unplugged on our system. Um, yeah, I don't see that soft phone there. Um, but like I said, those kind of things are typically normal. Um, again, I like to, uh, as I'm going through this list, I also like to click on our servers and make sure that those look green and healthy and that there's no issues here with any of the services running on our servers, um, which if there is, you don't have to look down here. It's gonna show up right here at the top and let you know. Um, so then you can come down here and see exactly what's going on. Um, phones we looked at, um, trunk groups again, you know, green is good, just sort of take a look. Voicemail is an important one to kind of take a look at just for general system health. Um, because you want to make sure that it looks like your your voicemail servers are not kind of being overloaded on on drive space, too many voicemail messages. Um, and then sometimes I also think it's good to come and take a look at the actual in voicemail boxes. And I like to sort by the unheard here and take a look and see what we got going on for uh, for voicemail messages um, to see if you have any mailboxes that maybe aren't being monitored. Um, you know, sometimes if a voicemail box gets turned on a, a conference room extension or a break room phone, um, somehow people will call in, find it, leave voicemails there, um, and then wonder why they never got a call back. Um, so another good thing to take a look at there. Um, and then the last thing I'll point out while we're still under the maintenance section of Director, which is where it brings us to when we first log in, um, is I want to come down here and point out the event filters. Um, so event filters I find very useful because they will actually send us an email um, if certain things kind of go wrong with the system. If there's a certain errors or alerts, um, we can get those emailed out to either us or in this case, we have a shared um, you know, mailbox for these uh, My Voice Connect alerts here. Um, we have a list of event IDs. These are Windows event viewer IDs. Um, there's a guide for that called the uh, My Voice Connect maintenance guide that lists all of the events. Um, these are the events that we have put into our system that we find to be useful. Um, some of these, uh, like 233 is a switch disconnected, um, 119 is packet loss. Um, but like I said, the guide that lists kind of lists all the events and what they are is the, uh, the Mitel, My Voice Connect maintenance guide. Um, and then I also have a, a list um, that I've, I've shared with, with you know, several customers, probably several on the call today, um, of kind of what I see as kind of my favorite ones because you don't want to turn it on for every single uh, error because there's a lot of errors that kind of pop up that are completely benign and don't need attention. Um, so you don't want to get flooded with too many. Um, so if you're interested in that list, go ahead and email me, um, steve at vertex.com, um, and I can get you a copy of, of kind of my, my favorite events that I like to monitor. Um, and with that, we're going to move over to our administration section and get into today's topic, which is going to be focused on user administration. So I'm going to click on the wrench to get us over into the administration section where all kind of the changes are made. We're going to drill into users here and then under the users section, we're going to go right into our actual users. And so again, we've got a table here that lists, you know, all the users that make up our system. Um, in the top, we have the list. In the bottom, we kind of have the details pane, kind of similar to a, you know, an Outlook reading pane. Um, we can highlight whatever we want and then see the details on that item down here below. 
Um, there's a couple of buttons over here that help us navigate this window. So if we want to look at the list, we can click this and kind of collapse the details pane and just look at the list. Um, if we're trying to find something in there, um, or if we have selected the item we want to work on here, I'm going to click on my own extension and we want to see a little bit more details here without having to scroll around, I can click on this button and push that list view out of the way and focus just on the details here. And so starting out uh, with our uh, user here, extension 1455 Steve Hall, um, at the very top here, we have an option for Active Directory user. You may or may not have this checkbox uh, visible on your system, um, whether or not you have Active Directory integration enabled under the system settings. Um, so if that's enabled, this checkbox will be here and you can choose whether or not this extension is Active Directory integrated or not. Um, in this case, this extension is Active Directory integrated. What that means is that uh, this user can log into the Mitel Connect desktop application um, without having to have a separate username and password for that application. They can check a box that says, use my Windows credentials, and it logs them right in. Um, so that's pretty handy. A couple other things we can do with this uh, Active Directory integration. Um, we can, first of all, there's an option here to show from AD. So this will show us uh, what settings are in our Windows, uh, Microsoft Active Directory database um, that would apply to the phone system. So let me show you what that looks like. If I click on this, um, I have to say okay to this HTTPS prompt because we don't have that enabled on this connection. And then it wants my AD password. So I have you know, rights to be able to view this information. And so what I can see here is we kind of have two, two tables here. We have the short tail values or my tail values. Um, what are the settings in our my tail phone system? We have first name, last name. We don't have anything listed for home phone, work phone. We have mobile phone, so on, email address we have. We have several blanks. In our Microsoft Active Directory, we have some more details filled out for me. We have a, a home phone, work phone, uh, pager, um, <clears throat> and of course our uh, our GUID, which is our kind of user ID inside of Active Directory. So there's several settings in AD um, that are filled out that we don't have kind of mirrored over in our Shortel Mitel system. Um, so I'm going to say OK to this. That was our show from AD, so that just lets us take a look. If I want to sync those settings over, so the sync is the one way it comes from our Microsoft AD into our Mitel phone system. It doesn't push any settings from the phone system to uh, Active Directory. Um, but if we want to pull in those additional phone numbers, that user's cell phone number, email address, other things that we may not have um, populated in the phone system database, we can hit sync. Again, we're going to have to enter our credentials here. Information has been copied over. We'll save this screen. And then if we do a show one more time, Now we can see that it has pulled that information from the Active Directory into our MyTel system. So now if someone is looking me up in the system directory, they're gonna be able to have all that information, my cell phone, my home phone, my pager number, um, all that information will be available to my uh, MyTel Connect clients that are uh, uh, looking up my contact information. Uh, as we move down the list, um, we have some you know, kind of common fields that all extensions need, uh, first name, last name, extension, um, some of these are grayed out, you'll notice, and that is because we are Active Directory integrated. Um, so those system, those uh, fields are kind of locked um, because they're they're pulled from Active Directory. Um, if we look at a non-Active Directory user, like our spare cubicle extension here, um, we can see this is not Active Directory integrated, and all those settings um, are open to be modified directly. Um, if you do need to modify one of these settings, uh, maybe the last name was misspelled, something like that. Kind of what you have to do is you have to uncheck this Active Directory option, save it, that'll open up these fields to be editable, um, make your changes, save it again, and then go back and re-enable the Active Directory setting on this user. Um, that's what you have to do to make any changes there. Um, as we come down, 
email address, client username, typically those are going to match um, because that's the, the account they're going to use. The client username is what they're going to use to log into the Mitel Connect desktop client. Um, whether or not we want to include this um, user in the system dial by name directory. So that is, you know, someone calls into your auto attendant, you give them the option to search for a name, and they go in there and they, they can type in, you know, the, the, the numbers that correspond to the letters of their first or last name and find the people that way. Um, so whether or not you want them to appear in that list. Um, make extension private will actually block their outgoing caller ID when they call out um, to people outside of your phone system. Um, they'll show up as, as private or blocked caller ID. Um, you know, not a lot of people answer calls from a blocked caller ID, so that one doesn't get a whole lot of use. Um, next one down here is our DID settings, direct inward dialing. This is where you can actually program an outside phone number to reach directly to this extension. Um, so if I change settings, we can see what that looks like. I can enable a DID. I can hit a drop down list if your, um, your trunks, your telephone lines from your service provider have DID ranges available. We can hit this. We can choose which range we want to pull a number out of. We can kind of see how many numbers are available in these different ranges. And then we can fill in the specific number that we want to give to this user. Um, scrolling down the next section here is PSTN failover. This is a neat setting for multi-site systems that may have um, you know, locations in different places. And if each of those locations kind of have their own independent telephone service, their own phone lines, um, you can use PSTN failover to reach those extensions at a remote site if your WAN links are down, if your links to the other site are down via, you know, either your, your if you have like a wide area network or VPNs or whatever, and those go down. Um, if you populate the PST and failover um, with a, you know, an external number, what will happen is if, you know, I'm user A and I try to call uh, user B who's at another site and the link is down, it will actually send the call out over the phone line uh, to this external number. To, uh, to try to reach them that way. Um, so it's just another option to kind of add some resiliency to your system. Um, you know, if you do have a multi-site system and you do have trunks at different locations, um, you know, that's definitely something you can make use of to, uh, to protect yourself from, from WAN outages. Uh, license type, uh, pretty simple. There's just a couple options here. We can have an extension and mailbox. So that's gonna be most of your typical users um, have a telephone extension and a voicemail box. Um, extension only is good for, like I mentioned before, you've got those conference room phones, break room phones, um, extensions that don't need voicemail, um, or mailbox only. Maybe there's not going to be a phone attached to this and it's just going to be a voicemail box. Um, so that's the option for, for mailbox only. Um, and that consumes one of your system licenses, um, <clears throat> depending on what choice you make there. The other type of license that we have to deal with with a user is the access license. So this controls the Mitel Connect desktop client license and what features they have available there. Um, phone only means they cannot use the desktop client at all. Um, Connect client is for most users. That means they can use the desktop client with all of the kind of basic features. Um, if you need to move up and you have the licenses for a workgroup agent or supervisor or operator, then you can make that selection there and they get a couple extra features. Um, we do have some other videos on our YouTube channel. Where we've done a deep dive on the different uh, versions of the Mitel uh, Connect desktop client and what those differences are. Um, so you can go check that out if, if uh, you need clarification on that. Next thing down here is the user group. So user group is very important because that controls um, kind of their permissions in the phone system, what they can do with their phone, who they can call, that sort of thing. Um, again, we can drop this down and take a look at the user groups that have been predefined. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break away from our individual user screen and go take a look at those user groups because those are a big part of our choices when we're configuring a user. Um, so if we take a look at our user groups, we can see them listed out right here on the left. And each user group is made up of a class, three classes of service. There's a class of service for telephony features, a class of service for call permissions, and a class of service for voicemail. And those are defined just below user groups on the left. Um, here's our telephony, call permissions, and voicemail permissions. Those are our different uh, classes of service. And let's go take a look at uh, one of these. We'll go look at our fully featured class of service because it has just about everything enabled. Um, 
with this, we can see, you know, what's our max call staff depth? How many calls can this, are we going to allow this user to juggle on their phone? Um, that doesn't mean they have to have that setting, but they can't go beyond that setting. Um, so call stack depth is how many calls until they're considered busy. You know, for most users, two is probably sufficient. You know, I'm, I'm on a call, another call rings. I kind of get the call waiting. I can choose to answer that call or not. Um, usually if you're going over, you know, a call stack depth of three or more, you're talking about kind of like a maybe a receptionist type situation where they need to place several calls on hold and then cycle back through them and get them dispatched where they need to go. Um, so that's kind of what call stack depth does. Max buddies, this is your contacts that get uh, um, pulled into your to your contacts list um, that you can monitor with the Connect client. Um, and then private contacts are when you search in the Connect Client Quick Dialer um, for your users. How many contacts is it going to pull in? There's kind of a balance there between, um, you know, how quickly um, that application is going to open up and scan those contacts in um, versus, you know, how many contacts users are typically going to have. Uh, so that's why there's a choice there. Uh, Make Me Conference, you know, how many people can you conference on your telephone? So this is just the ad hoc conferencing using your telephone. This is not like a conference bridge, such as what we're on today, where you call in and you can enter a conference ID. Um, Make me conferencing is just, you know, I'm on I'm on the phone with you. I hit my conference button. I call somebody else. I join them in. Um, I put that call on hold. I call somebody else and join them in. Um, that's what the Make Me conferencing is. You can go up to eight if you're using um, the new ST voice switches. Um, if you're still using some of the SG switches in your system, and that's what this phone is controlled by, um, you're going to be limited to, to six parties on a Make Me conference. <clears throat> Call pickup, that's the feature where if you hear a phone ringing, you can pick it up from your phone. Um, you can have a pickup button, and then you can uh, dial the extension of the phone that you hear ringing, and it'll grab that. Um, trunk to trunk transfer, so that's the ability to take a you know, you get an inbound call from the outside that comes in over one of your phone lines or your trunks, and you transfer it to another outside line. Um, so that's a permission that, that you can control. Um, overhead and group paging, if you've got, you know, paging connected to your phone system, you can control who has access to that. Um, make hunt group busy is kind of a neat feature that gets used in a couple places. If you have um, a hunt group, which is a group of phones that kind of ring together um, on an inbound call, um, you can give the user the ability to make that hunt group busy, which will essentially send those calls somewhere else. Um, so maybe you have a hunt group and you want to be able to um, have the user, instead of putting it on a schedule um, and have it kind of have open hours and closed hours, um, you can allow the users to go in there, dial up the extension of the hunt group and make it busy um, to make it divert calls to kind of a secondary destination, maybe a closed message, something like that. <clears throat> Uh, extension reassignment, that's our ability to go into another phone and log in there. Um, so if we're working in another office and we need to log into that phone so we can place and receive calls from that phone um, as if it was our phone, that's what extension reassignment does for us. Uh, PST and failover, we talked about what that was, but we can choose whether or not we want to allow all users access to PST and failover, or maybe that's kind of reserved because we don't have enough phone lines. Um, we reserve that for you know kind of key users in the system. Um, show caller ID, name, and number for other extensions. So if you're monitoring other uh, telephone extensions, either through monitored extension buttons on your telephone um, or through the Connect client, um, do you want those other users to be able to see kind of the caller ID um, that those other users are connected to? Um, call park, if you want to be able to see how many uh, calls the other user has when you're trying to retrieve a call from call park, unparking a call. Um, you know, that's our permission for that. Whether or not we want to allow the user to customize um, the buttons on their phone so they can go in through the what's called the TUI, the telephone user interface on their phone, go into settings, put in their voicemail password, and actually um, set their buttons up to do things um, like speed dials and whatnot. Um, we can choose that, choose whether or not to give them that permission. <clears throat> Um, different prefixes. I don't think any of um, the systems we're managing are using uh, site prefixes. Um, so if you have a very big system with lots and lots of sites, 
uh, maybe instead of just using you know four digit extensions or five digit extensions you're actually using um, kind of a prefix for a site and then the extension um, collaboration features like conferencing call recording do you want to allow the users to record their calls um, that's an option you can turn on and off video calls inner site video calls so again that may be something where you want to kind of limit that based on how much bandwidth you have between sites um, call notes again in your connect client um, you can actually add notes to a call so those can be looked at later when you're looking at your call history if you've been given the permission for call history which is our next option there um, upload of personal contacts again if you've got you know personal outlook contacts do you want those to be uploaded into your uh, to your to the server which then displays in your again your mytel connect client or even on your telephone um, so if someone calls you and they're one of your contacts um, your mytel connect client and even the caller id on your telephone is going to show the name of the contact not necessarily what comes through from the phone company is the caller id name for that call um, so sometimes that confuses people when they see you know a nickname or something pop up on their telephone display um, they wonder you know how did that nickname get into the phone system um, probably because it was one of their personal contacts that got uploaded to the system and then when it saw that match it displayed that that contact name rather than the true caller id name and then we have some settings down here we don't uh, have a lot of users making use of um, you know the intercom feature where you can speak your phone into someone else's uh, phone directly um, you know whisper paging where you can kind of talk to somebody who's on the phone and give them a you know let them know somebody else maybe is calling um, you know barge in if you need to interrupt a phone call and kind of jump into it uh, recording others calls that's not a feature that gets used a lot unless you have the uh, mytel call recorder application which automatically records calls um, then you do have to enable this setting and allow the call recorder extension to do call recording um, silent monitor silent coach we do see that sometimes in, in call centers where you have a supervisor who can listen into calls um, and then coach their agents um, you know through some some situations on those calls Availability state changes, you know, we've got our available out of office vacation modes. Um, do we want to allow those changes, you know, maybe for a contact center agent who kind of just takes calls and that's all they do. Um, they really don't need any of those features, so we can turn those off. Um, so that's kind of what the, the telephony features look like. Um, and that is just one of our three classes of service. Um, the next one is real simple. That's just our call permissions, which is essentially who can they call? Can they call only internal extensions, uh, maybe only local calls, uh, national long distance and national mobile? Really, those are kind of one and the same now that you know, people pretty much operate on cell phones all the time. Um, <clears throat> are they allowed to make international calls or just all calls with no restrictions? Um, this also has to work in conjunction, especially when we talk about international long distance. This does have to work in conjunction with what your telephone service provider, your carrier, um, allows you to call because sometimes they have restrictions on international calls. Um, so if, if they allow international calls, then you can use our, you know, our call permissions class of service for our user groups to decide what they can actually, you know, to limit that down to only certain users. Um, you can, again, even if you select all calls, you can still place restrictions. So I can say all calls except maybe 1900, 1976 calls. Um, you can put additional restrictions on top of all calls. Or kind of the inverse of that is I can select maybe internal only, um, but they are allowed to call this one particular outside phone number. Um, I can put that in here. Um, and so once we have this call permission class of service set the way we want it and give it a name. We already have several that are kind of pre-named in here. Um, we're not gonna make any changes right now. We have several that are pre-named in here. Um, so we've got those to choose from when we're creating our user groups, which we'll go right back to after we look at voicemail permissions. Voicemail permissions, again, are pretty easy. This is kind of how big of a mailbox, um, how long can the messages be, uh, how many messages can they have? You know, those sort of settings. How long can those messages uh, be saved if you want to set permissions on that? Um, some different permissions uh, related to auto delete. 
down here. Um, again, there's some pre-baked ones in the system that are already there for you, and those work for most purposes. Uh, a large mailbox, maybe for executives. Um, small mailbox, you know, again, for maybe, I don't know, contact center agents, somebody you don't want to, you know, allow to accumulate too many voicemails. Um, so then we go up to our user groups. And essentially with our user group, so if we take a look at our user group called VCI users, we can choose those class of services that we just looked at. So we can choose the telephony class of service we want to apply to this user group. We can choose the call permissions, you know, our local, international, long distance uh, call permissions. We can choose which one of those we want to apply to this particular user group and our mailbox permissions. Um, there's a couple other settings here that relate to um, our CSID, which is our um, emergency identification number for calling 911. Um, again, we have another webinar that goes into in-depth uh, settings on those settings and, and kind of the legalities around that. So check that out if you're interested in that. And then the final kind of thing that we look at when we're looking at user groups is what trunks do they have access to? So again, if it's a large multi-site system with trunks in different places, um, maybe it makes sense to actually have certain user groups um, allowed to use uh, certain trunk groups. So once you have that user group set the way you want it, what truck gr trunk groups and what class of services they have, we can go back to our user. I'm gonna select Steve again in the list here. And we can choose what user group we're gonna apply to this, to this user. Um, the next one is the head is our, our site, which um, for this user is set to headquarters. We only have one site in the system, so that's pretty easy. Um, really, the only time you're going to change that is if you are manually trying to assign a telephone to this user um, in director is if we look at the phone that's assigned to this user, we can see right here this MAC address starts with 08000F. I can change settings. I can take a look at MAC addresses that are available in my system. So these are phones that are not assigned to anybody that I can choose to assign to this user. So their name's gonna pop up on the phone and all their settings will move over to this phone. Um, <clears throat> if you have a multi-site system, each of those phones kind of knows what site it's at based on its IP address and the network map. Um, so we have to choose what site and then we're gonna see the list of available phones at that site. Um, so that's kind of the only time you're really going to change the site setting is if you're trying to find the right uh, available phone to assign to that user. Um, and this is also where we're going to come if maybe you have a user whose phone has, for whatever reason, you know, they've got a broken phone, you need to swap it out. Um, you know, typically you're going to go over to that user's desk, plug in that new phone. It, typically it's going to automatically get recognized by the system. Um, come, come up in the system and say available on the screen. Um, so then you'll be able to walk over to director here and you're going to hit this drop down and you're going to see the mac address of that phone mac address is on a sticker on the back of all the phones um, and you'll be able to, to assign that phone to that user um, we can also see the current port um, so we talked earlier about the user's ability to log into other phones um, so we can, as an administrator, we can assign a phone to a user. In this case, this is the phone we've assigned to the user. And we can take a look at the current port and we can see that this user is currently assigned to that phone. So that's, that's what we would expect to see. Um, if we allow them to sign into other phones, we might see a different MAC address of a different phone pop up in this screen. And then this button's gonna light up and we can actually reassign them back to their primary phone if maybe they've you know, kind of forgotten how to do that or they did that by mistake or whatever. Um, we can reset that setting. You'll also see this change if they've assigned themselves to use the soft phone um, or if they've assigned themselves to use external assignment where all their calls are immediately you know, forwarded to an external number, cell phone, home phone, that sort of thing. Um, let me show you what that looks like here. So let me go into my uh, Mitel Connect client here and I'm going to assign myself to my soft phone here. And then we're going to kind of refresh this screen. I'm just going to click on another user, and click back into this screen. And now I can see that the current port here, this MAC address is different from the primary phone port that I have been assigned to. Um, so this user can either go to their Mitel Connect client and assign themselves back to their desk phone, or as an admin, I can say go to primary phone and kind of do that for them. 
Um, and then again, you'll also see if they go to uh, external number, external assignment, where I'm going to send all my calls maybe to my cell phone. And again, we refresh the screen here. I can see now this user is set for external assignment. Um, so I know that their phones are, their, their calls are going to be going to an external number. Um, sometimes people turn that setting on, kind of forget about it, and don't know why they're not getting calls at their desk. Um, so we can come in here as an admin and say, go to primary phone, and it'll reset that back to their, to their desk phone for them. Next setting down here is our mailbox server. If you have multiple mailbox servers, you can choose where that user's mailbox is going to reside. Um, again, if it's a multi-site system, it makes sense to put their mailbox kind of close to where that user is at the same site or um, you know, as close as we can. Client password here, again, is grayed out because I'm an Active Directory integrated user, so I don't necessarily have a client password. It's just I use my Active Directory, my Windows password, to log into my uh, Mitel desktop client. Um, it's also the password if you have um, admins designated in your system. You know, users who can come into this Mitel Connect Director and make changes. Um, the password you specify here, or if they're Active Directory integrated, is going to be the password that they use to get into the Mitel Connect Director. And then uh, kind of the last setting here is our SIP phone password. This only applies if you're using a third-party uh, SIP phone for this extension. Most commonly, we see that if you have what's called an ATA or an analog terminal adapter um, set up to create a SIP connection to your phone system and then plug in an analog device, most commonly a fax machine to your phone system. Um, that ATA device is going to have to be programmed with the extension and this SIP phone password to kind of log in as this user extension on your phone system. Um, and then one thing that just uh, I wanted to make sure that I show, we do have a lot of users, a lot of uh, admins that will ask, um, you know, if I have a, uh, you know, some turnover, an employee leaves and another employee comes in to take that, that position, um, how do I kind of reset their phone um, for this new user? Um, same phone, same extension, um, but there's a new user here. And a lot of times people want to come in here and just kind of rename uh, the user. I usually recommend against uh, doing that because there are a lot of different settings that the user might have set up in their like in their personal user settings in their Mitel Connect client. Um, they might have their home phone number set in there for forwarding calls. They might have a cell phone number set up in there. Um, they might have different greetings because with the system, um, you know, you can have six different voicemail greetings depending on your call handling state. You can have your out of office greeting, your vacation greeting, and so on. Um, and so if you just change the name, um, you know, the new user may come in and they may re record their, their primary greeting, but maybe they didn't record their vacation greeting. And they enable that down the road and, and you know, they kind of get the voicemail greeting from the previous employee there. Um, so there's a lot of different settings that can get tied to a user. So I usually recommend um, the best option is just to kind of take a look at the extension, take a look at the MAC address primarily, delete this user and recreate this user with the new username, um, give them the same extension, give them the same telephone. Um, but then what comes up is there's a lot of different uh, other settings that are applied. Um, obviously, you know, user group we can take a look at here. Um, this is in our VCI MWB user group, so we want to record that. Sometimes screenshots are good if I'm doing that. <clears throat> but then there's also a matter of, you know, hunt groups, work groups, um, different things like that that this user may be tied to. So that is where this uh, show references button comes in really handy. Um, if we do have to delete and recreate a user, we can click the show references button. And this will show us kind of everywhere in the system that this extension is programmed. Um, so I can see that it's a member of this particular hunt group. It's a backup extension for this work group. It's a member of this work group. Um, it's in some various extension lists. Um, it's an auto attendant menu option. Um, I can also see that it's a programmable button set up on certain people's phones. So other people have a kind of a monitored extension button pointed at this extension. Um, so again, I can take a look at this, I can screenshot this, whatever. Um, so I can kind of take a look at all the settings um, that are applied to this user. So if I do need to either, again, like I said, some turnover in the company, you need to replace this with, the, with a new user, um, or maybe that department is expanding 
and you have another user you're dropping into that department and you want them to have basically all the same settings in the same work groups, hunt groups, and so on, um, you can take a look at that and make sure that you apply all those settings uh, to that new user. Uh, moving along, the general tab is kind of the, the that's where most of the settings that you're going to have to work on um, for a new user are going to be at, but we'll quickly go through some of these other tabs here. Uh, the telephony tab, again, the call stack depth. Um, so we looked at the user group um, permissions, and I'm allowed to have a call stack depth up to eight calls. I do not want to manage eight calls on my phone, um, so I have my call stack set, call stack depth set below that uh, down to three calls. So that allows me to have a call that I'm on and maybe two other calls on hold, um, and that is plenty for, uh, for what I want to do on my phone. What that means when my call stack depth is reached is that means any additional calls to my extension are going to go to my busy destination. Um, so again, we've looked at that typically on our, on our user training when we're looking at the different call handling uh, settings, but we can take a look at that as an admin, availability states. I'm currently in my available availability state, and I can see um, that I have a no answer busy destination of voicemail. So what that means is when my call stack depth is reached, I get that fourth call, it's immediately going to go to voicemail rather than ring my phone. Um, next couple settings, ring type and wallpaper. Those only apply uh, if you've got the older, um, what they call the MGCP phones, are like 400 series, 480, 485 phones. Um, these settings are not going to apply if you've got the, the newer 6900 series phones. Um, those settings are controlled. Um, again, on the TUI, the telephone user interface, right on the phone itself. Automatic off-hook preference. Um, this kind of is a setting, again, this is a user setting, but we can come in here as an admin and set it for them. Um, if you get an incoming call and you answer it, typically by maybe pressing the button on your Mitel Connect client, and say answer, um, where do we want that audio to go? Phone, a headset, maybe wireless headset, Bluetooth headset. If you've got one of the newer Bluetooth phones and you've got a Bluetooth headphone a headset connected to that phone, you can set that as the default. Um, and that way, if they are, you know, typically interacting with their phone through the Mitel Connect client, um, you know, they just click that answer and kind of the audio goes where we want it to go. Um, Hands-free mode, again, you know, if they do kind of work with a headset all the time and they answer and um, hang up calls and transfer calls, um, you know, when they're making a transfer or whatever, they don't want to hear that dial tone that comes on when they're making a new call. So hands-free mode, essentially what that does is it just disables the dial tone from playing in their ear um, for a headset user. Call waiting tone, of course, that's pretty obvious. Do they want to have a call waiting tone enabled or not? Um, the default trunk access code. So if they just type in a number, but they don't type in the nine before it, um, the system will automatically put that in. And in some very, uh, very few cases, do we have a system with multiple trunk access codes? Um, mailbox for recorded calls. Again, if we gave the user the permission to record their calls, by default, um, those recordings are going to show up as a voicemail in their personal mailbox. Um, in some cases, maybe you want to redirect those to a shared mailbox um, for those call recordings. You can set that here. Um, we have a couple decked headset settings. That's if you have the Mitel uh, integrated decked headsets that uh, plug right into the side of the phone. Um, you can choose a couple settings for that. Um, these settings typically only need to be changed if you're operating in an area where you have a high density of those headsets. A lot of those headsets maybe you know, in a cubicle area. Um, you can set it to narrow band audio, um, so you can actually get more wireless channels um, in a small area, so there's less chance of interference. Um, or you could set it to maybe higher power if there's a you know a lot of lot of interference with those with those headsets. Um, fax support. This is very important if you are, um, as we talked about before, maybe using an analog adapter to set up um, a fax machine on your system. You have to tell the system that it's a fax machine because otherwise the system's going to hear those fax tones and it's going to try to intercept that call and send it somewhere else. Um, especially if you have a fax server tied to your system, um, it's going to know to send those calls there. Um, so that's what user redirect, which is the default setting, will do. If someone sends a fax to my extension and I have user redirect enabled, 
the system will hear that fax tone, it'll intercept that call, and it'll send it to the designated uh, fax server on our system. Um, fax machine, fax server, kind of depends on whether this is just a simple fax machine or a true fax server that can route calls to route faxes to different um, users. Um, what type of fax machine you might have. Um, or user no redirect, which is, you know, a typical user extension, um, but you don't want to have the system automatically intercept those fax tones. So not sure why anybody would want to hear that, but you do have that option here. Uh, video calls. Um, again, video calls are, you have to be using the Mitel Connect client and you have to be in soft phone mode, um, but we can choose whether or not we want to allow video calls at all. We did see in the permissions, user group permissions, um, we had the ability to control intersite video calls, um, but here we can just enable that or disable that completely for the user. Uh, telephony presence, um, do we want this user to be able to see whether or not other users in the system are on the phone or off the phone, um, either using their monitored extension buttons or their Mitel Connect client? Shared call appearance, that's a setting that's typically used if you have kind of maybe a, uh, an executive and their assistant kind of situation you can enable shared call appearances so that the assistant can actually watch the, the call appearances or the call stack of the executive's phone. They can see when they're on the phone. They can actually see if there's a second call ringing on their phone. Maybe they answer that second call for them rather than them having to kind of juggle the calls. Um, that's where uh, shared call appearances are typically used. Um, we have an option here to allow the user to use soft phone. Um, this phone API, this one's rarely used. This is for third-party applications that you may have that kind of tie into your MyTel system and can actually uh, display things on your phone. There's some emergency management systems that can do that. Um, but you know, the instructions for setting up that third-party software will tell you to check this box off or not. Um, remote phone authentication. This one is if you have the, uh, the MyTel Edge gateway, which allows phones to kind of, users can take phones home and the phone will VPN back into the office and they can, they can have a desk phone at their home. Um, enhanced mobility, that's the smartphone application. Um, so if we want to allow that user to have access to that, uh, to that application, we can set that up here. Um, ring down, this is kind of a seldom used feature, kind of neat. Um, if you have like a, uh, sometimes there's like a loading dock backdoor kind of phone where, um, somebody presses a button and it just makes a call. Like you don't have to dial an extension. Um, sometimes I also see this in a lobby where there's a, an unmanned lobby phone. Um, there's no one sitting at the desk. User can walk up and just uh, pick up a phone and it will automatically make a call. That's what ring down is. So if you enable ring down, um, when that phone gets picked up, just off hook, it's automatically gonna make a call um, after whatever delay we set here. Um, so that's typically where I see that as kind of a, a backdoor loading dock situation or maybe an unmanned lobby situation. Next tab we have here is voicemail. This is our voicemail password. So this is different from the client password, which is our desktop client, which also lets us access our voicemail. Um, but the voicemail password is if you need to access your voicemail, you know, from the phone, from either your desk phone or if you have the ability to call in from the outside and navigate through the auto attendant and check your voicemail that way, you're gonna need a voicemail password. The voicemail passwords are always numeric because you have to be able to punch those numbers in on the telephone. Um, so if someone has forgotten that or needs to change that, um, you can come in here as an admin and change that for them. Um, broadcast messages, these are broadcast voicemails. Um, so very similar to like a, an email distribution group where you send a message and it goes to multiple users. Uh, that's what a broadcast message is. So if you want this user to receive those, um, in some situations, um, some companies actually have the ability for one user to make a voicemail recording and send it out to, to all or most of the phones in the system. Um, the envelope information um, when listening to messages. So if you're, if you're listening to your messages on your uh, desktop client or on even your desktop telephone, you don't really need the envelope information with the caller ID and the timestamp of the call because you're going to see that anyway. But if you are calling in from the outside and listening to your voicemails that way, maybe from your cell phone, um, maybe you do want to have the system read out the caller ID and the timestamp that this voicemail was left. So that's what that envelope information is about. 
Uh, email delivery options. Again, do we want to have the system um, send a notification uh, to our email when we get a voicemail? Um, we can either just send an email to let us know we have a voicemail, or we can attach a WAV file, um, or we can send an email with a link um, that will actually let them you know, pull up their voicemail as long as their computer is, is connected to the network. Again, inside the network or over a VPN, um, they'll be able to access that link. <clears throat> um, automatic message forwarding, we don't see a lot, but that is essentially where um, I do see that sometimes, maybe if an employee has left and we wanna make sure that that voicemail box is um, being attended to, rather than have to go over and check their voicemail, we can enable automatic message forwarding. So anytime someone leaves a voicemail in this extension's voicemail box, we can automatically forward it to someone else's voicemail box. Um, so that way they'll be able to, to monitor that and manage that. The next one is routing. So this is a lot of settings that uh, users can access via their desktop client. They can go in and they can set up um, the different phones that they have, you know, cell phones, home phones, et cetera. They can set up whether or not they wanna have uh, incoming calls ring additional phones. Maybe I wanna have incoming calls when I'm available. I also want them to ring um, my cell phone, or my home phone, I already have that set up. Um, <clears throat> You can enable that setting here. If the user enables that setting in their own user settings, you're also gonna see it here. Um, so if you need to know if they have that setting enabled, you can check it um, or you can make changes to it um, for them here. Um, the availability states, again, we talked about the different uh, availability states available in a meeting out of office. Um, the users can change this if they have their permissions and they have the Mitel Connect client. But again, we can come in here and we can kind of take a look at what those settings are and we can make changes for them if we need to. Um, we can see what uh, groups in the system. We can see distribution groups. Those are those voicemail distribution groups we talked about, um, work groups, and whether or not they're making use of the delegation feature, which is where I can have another user have permissions to go in and change my availability state from maybe in a meeting out of office um, if I've forgotten to do it. Um, you can set up what users have the delegation rights to do that. Applications, these are some of the third-party applications um, from Mitel. If you have those um, enabled, you'll have those settings here. If you're using the Conference Bridge or IM appliance, you'll have those settings available here. Um, and then finally, DNS, which is kind of the other way that we can route calls to extensions. We have DID that we talked about earlier over here set on, on this tab here. So I do have a DID assigned to me. Um, DNS is just a kind of another way of routing phone numbers uh, to extensions. Um, both are valid, both work. Um, there's really not a big difference function, functionally as to which you use there. Um, and that's our final tab on the users. And that brings me to the end of today's topic. Thank you again, Steve, as always. Thanks, everybody.